Hey folks, uh, in this small screencast, I want to walk you through the um, orchestration example within Flowing Retail. Um, Flowing Retail is a yeah, sample application to showcase a couple of things around event-driven architecture and microservices. And it basically implements a small um, order fulfillment workflow where um, whenever you, um, let me quickly work with that, whenever we're um, hitting kind of a dash button, that's the idea, then in the background there is an, um, and the dash button is like, hey, washing powder is empty. I um, put the, push the button once and then one box of washing powder is sent to me. And the idea is I put it next to the washing powder, obviously. And um, in the background, that's a, uh, business process going on, like you have to pay for the item, you have to fetch it from the warehouse, you have to ship it. Um, and if I have a couple of microservices like the checkout and the payment, inventory and shipment, um, the interesting question is like, how do they communicate in order to get um, things done? In another screencast, we looked actually at the um, choreographed way of doing things so you could um, emit events like hey the order was placed and somebody else um, like payment subscribes to it says oh order was placed i have to retrieve payment does it emits another event somebody else subscribes to it and so on and so forth we talked about the shortcomings of that that you can see the workflow um anywhere and that it's also especially hard to change it so if you want to for example change the sequence of things because you, for example, you want to fetch items first. Um, you have to do a lot of things within your microservices here, like the subscriptions, and that's pretty hard to change. And the orchestration um, example to that would be like, hey, we want to have an own microservice doing the overall, or in this case, the end-to-end -end business process, like order fulfillment, which makes a lot of sense from a business perspective to have that, like. Um, one team, one person being responsible, um, really owning that logic. And this uh, microservice might like react to an, to an event like, hey, the order was placed, but then it also like commands others to do something um, like, hey, payment, please retrieve the payment now. And then payment doesn't have to react to any event here, like, hey, order placed, which would be weird because payment shouldn't know anything about orders, right? I have a couple of talks and recordings um, talking about this in depth, like um, the coupling, um, like the different couplings um, when you have events or if you send these commands. Um, the bottom line here is like, um, the, it's always coupled. I mean, if you're event-driven, it's coupled. If you're command-driven, it's also coupled. You, you basically decide on which end of the communication um, you do the coupling. If you wanna, wanna dive deeper into that, um, there are a couple of recordings on my homepage. If you go to um, bandrücke.io, um, you can look into um, the different um, talks. Yeah, I, I run a lot of things on my computer at the moment, so it's unfortunately pretty slow. Um, so for example, the opportunity pitfall, pitfalls of event driven utopia would be a good, good um, talk to dive into um, if you're interested in that. Okay. So how, how do we do that? Um, so basically um, what I have in the background is a couple of um, services running. Um, so for example, um, and a bit of infrastructure. So I already have Docker Compose running, which for example, runs Kafka uh, and a couple of other things. And then I have the microservices, like for example, the checkout microservice. And that's uh, if you scroll up, it's a simple um, Spring Boot application, just connecting, um, in this case, to Kafka. Uh, and the checkout service basically um, communicates with the, with the UI. Um, let's quickly go for the checkout service. Here it is. And um, whenever I click here, I place a new order. Okay. So, um, and then I have a small web application. Um, which basically um, listens to Kafka and visualizes everything it sees on Kafka. So whenever I place an order, that's an event um, on Kafka and I can see that here, okay? So um, that's more or less it. Um, no, nothing happens, why? Um, because I haven't started the order microservice. In order to do so, um, I start that um, here and 
that's again, it's a it's a Spring Boot application. There are a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, so I have one using Kamona, one basically using Kamona Cloud, which is CV. Um, you could also do that hard coded. Um, so there are a couple of ways. Um, and since I'm recording, um, that actually consumes a lot of my uh, computing power at the moment. Um, so this might take a bit to come up. Okay, um, so they started up. And so what you can see now um, is that something happened. So um, the um, basically the order fulfillment microservice um, send out a command to retrieve the payment. Um, then this probably um, somehow happened because from the payment service, uh, we say, hey, the customer used some credit and the payment was received. So this um, basically um, let the order service to or the microservice to uh, continue and send out the fetch goods command. Nothing, nothing happens because um, we haven't yet started the inventory. Um, so I basically do that in the background. Whoa, where is inventory? Um, but we don't have to wait for that this time. So um, I just do that, and whenever it's up, um, uh, it will it will continue here. Um, the interesting thing is we're now able to look into that. So if we're going to um, 92, that's um, the microservice, the order fulfillment microservice. Um, so we, there we can look into um, the UI of, in this case, the workflow engine, um, which is Kamona BPM. And if we do that, what we can see is like, okay, you see um, there are, there's a workflow deployed in order to really um, control um, the order fulfillment, um, like the orchestration. Um, if we look at that, um, you can see that there is something um, going on, actually. Da, 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 da. It's much quicker, actually, if you don't run like a trillion of applications on your laptop. <laughs> but um, anyway, what you can see is like, OK, there's um, currently one in like this should be ours. Um, let's look at that specifically. Um, there we can see that it's currently waiting for the goods to be fetched. It sent out the command. That's basically what we saw on the monitor. It already had the payment received. Um, you can see if you want to see that the data attached and so on and so forth. Um, the cool thing here is that um, you now really have some place where you can understand like the overall workflow, where you can simply change it. So if you want to change it, you basically, within that microservice, you can just update the workflow model and it will um, be changed. And you have versioning of the workflow engine, um, which helps you to um, keep ongoing order fulfillments um, like running in the logic you defined it in the first time, which is actually really hard to get going in a, in a choreography and all this kind of things. So that's um, actually pretty powerful. Um, an important thought here, and I might quickly go to the slide, an important thought is like, um, this is not something like a central orchestration thing. So it's really, and I go to that, hang on. Right, so it's really part of my order fulfillment microservice. So that's part of the domain logic where it says, hey, I want to retrieve payment first, um, but I have to wait for that because it's asynchronous, for example, here. Um, and because it's asynchronous, I have to wait for it. And that's why a workflow engine is a good choice to be used here um, because um, you somehow have to persist the state and wait for things to happen. And probably then you need things like timeouts and so on and so forth. You need things like, um, which is called the saga pattern, like consistency, where you say, hey, um, if the goods can't be fetched, we might have to refund the payment, for example, and these kind of things. So there are a lot of things um, which you have to implement within that microservice to do a proper orchestration, um, which lead you to, hey, a workflow engine and BPMN is a good choice. Okay. Um, a good way of um, also um, showing that is like the payment microservice might also have a workflow embedded, like uh, in this case, this one. And what you can see is like I'm going to a different port because it means I'm accessing a different microservice, in this case, a different Spring Boot application, which is not connected to this one at all. So if I look at processes here, what you can see is 
um, there's only an order process. If you go to um, this one and log in, um, what you can see is there's only the payment um, workflow. So this one doesn't know about um, the uh, order, right? And if I go into, into any details here, um, what you can see it's more or less um, this one. So um, we see, hey, there was a payment going on, right? And I can see the path it took. Right, um, so there was no uh, no credit card failure, for example. Okay, um, so that's a good way of showing that like every microservice can has its embedded workflow, and this way you don't violate any microservice principles, um, which are about autonomy of these services. So um, every microservice can decide on its own how it's implemented, and um, yeah, basically what kind of tools it use. So there's nothing central, no central orchestration engine involved. Okay, that's the orchestration part of the flowing retail example. And probably as the last thing, yeah, so goods are fetched, or inventory microservice came up, so next thing is ship goods. And then we have to start the next one in order to, to see everything happening. But I don't do that um, right now. Probably a very last um, remark, very very briefly, um, in the choreography recording, um, we touched on a tool called Common Optimize, which can make sense um, of events on a bus and map that to a workflow model in order to see if um, that the, basically the the events going on on your event bus match. The expectations you have on the um, underlying workflow, and this tool uh, that's called an event-based process here. And there we basically modeled this workflow because that was our expectation. What was going on in a choreography, for example, that we see all these events flowing around. And the interesting part is um, this one listens to um, Kafka, and what you can already see is that there. There are also like, um, I'm sending also the commands on Kafka, like, hey, retrieve payment for me. And then this probably leads to an event, which is payment received, okay? And in Optimize, you could even visualize these um, command response or command event patterns easily. So you could say retrieve payment command, hey, this actually starts this activity of payment rece retrieval. So um, then if I'm correct, I should say something like, we retrieve payment, okay? And um, this is started by the command and ended by the received event. And the same thing here, like this is a service task, it can run for a longer time, and it's actually started by the fetch goods command and ended by the goods fetched event, right? And same thing here, so this one is started by the ship goods command and ended by the goods shipped event. Okay, um, and right. And actually what you can see is like, I have different microservices depending if I'm in a choreography or not. Okay, so um, I probably have to fix that here. So it's not the choreography, it's the... Um, I didn't receive that yet. <laughs> um, anyhow, I just wanted to show you that you can, can map that um, as well. If you save that, if I publish that, um, I will be able to um, to do reports on that. Um, and this is now reading, not reading any data from, from the workflow engine. So it's basically just processing um, the events we have on Kafka. And that allows me to do a report um, where I can see, for example, also like um, edit, we're going to the latest version. Oh, right. So that's the latest version. You can see the service task. And then as you can see like um, that this really um, took a long time, um, but the, the data is now really um, screwed up a bit because I, I mixed different um, examples. Um, it just just the point was to, um, to give you an idea what you could do with these kind of, um, what we call process events monitoring. And that might even be interesting for um, orchestrations independent of if you're using a workflow engine or not, or probably you even wanna have insight into um, like 
parts of different microservices taking part in a in a bigger bigger business process. You want to visualize that. Um, okay, um, that's all for now. If you want to try it out, um, go to the flowing retail example there. Um, it's basically you have an explanation how to run it. Um, the easiest is uh, using Docker Compose and Docker, and then it's quite easy to get going. Um, thank you for listening.